Well, hello. Is everybody still going or is everybody kind of starting to droop a little? All right, well, before we go any further, there are some thank yous that need to happen. I first want to thank Cornerstone Church for letting us have it here, opening their doors, and Pastor Eric for changing toilet paper rolls and all that kind of fun stuff. So can we give um, Cornerstone Church a round of applause? Then can we give a round of applause for the worship team? They all also have taken out of their Sunday, some with, or Saturday, some with kids and different schedules. And so thank you, you guys, from the bottom of our heart. You guys have been wonderful. Um, now, I want to thank those um, who are on the team to help do this. If that is you, stand, please. Okay, we're, Val, we are missing, Rhonda, where's Aaron? Aaron, if you can hear the sound of my voice. I see her running down the stairs. Okay, come in here, come in here, come here. Erin is one, she does not like the spotlight, but she has been in charge of this from the get-go. And so let's give her and the rest of the team a round of applause. Okay, and for all the breakout speakers, did you guys enjoy the breakout sessions? This, those are just some of the women in leadership in our section, and um, I've heard some really good things. So if you're a breakout speaker, please stand. Two, three, four. Who are we missing? Sherry. Where'd Sherry go? She, she's probably still up there cleaning up, huh? Well, thank you, Sherry, if you can hear us. Okay, so we have two more gifts to give away. And this time I have my glasses so I can read. Are we ready? Okay, nine, eight, five. That should all be the same for everybody. <laughs> Some of you got really excited. <laughs> um, zero, one, eight, two. Woo! Come grab a basket. There you go. Yep, they're the same. Okay, 985. <laughs> I just had to do that. <laughs> Zero, one, four, six. Woohoo, Woo Vicki! Lisa, will you come grab this? Or somebody come get it for her. Thank you. And the other person I want to thank is Katie. She is my little spiritual daughter, a very powerful woman of God, but she has been, she wasn't on the team, but she got here early, has been running around. She's been doing my book table and some other things. So let's give Katie a round of applause. All right, are you guys ready for another session? Because God's not done yet. What he began this morning, he's continued all day and he's gonna finish this afternoon. So let's get started in worship. You guys stand with us as we enter into worship today. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, you are near. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Praise we could ever 
Lord, we pray that you empower us to go and to share your message. Lord, there is so much power, so much beauty in your name, Lord, and we pray that today we recognize it and we proclaim it. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
let's just stay here for a minute. I don't think the Lord's quite done with this right here. If you're struggling or you know somebody who is, can we go back and say, I sing that I speak Jesus for my family. And I just want, I just want you, if you're fighting for your family, if you're struggling emotionally with depression, anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, whatever it might be, as we sing this, as you speak the name of Jesus, I just want you to picture just the, the Holy Spirit in that moment meeting you right where you are. And then I pray that strongholds are broken, that the prodigals would in this moment feel the presence of the Holy Spirit wherever they are. I don't know about you, but I got family members who I'm praying for. So let's go back to that. We shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, for our families. I speak the holy name of Jesus. from the throne room. Father, once again, will you open eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to receive all that you have prepared. And Father, we will give you the thanks and the praise and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. God is so good, isn't he? God is just so wonderful. And I pray that as we sing, we're gonna end with that again, but as we sing Jesus, just that strongholds are broken. Like I love that song, it's, it's in his name alone, amen? amen? So we talked about being chosen and how God chooses us. 
Well, I want to talk this afternoon about our response when we're chosen. If you have your Bible again, turn with me to Luke 1. I'm going to begin in verse 39. Have you been blessed today? Praise God. Luke 1, 39, that's where I'm going to begin. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you were bare. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. That is the scripture for this conference. Blessed is she. Just close your eyes for a minute. I want to read this over each one of you. Blessed is she. Blessed are you. Because you have believed. that the Lord would fulfill his promises to you. Blessed are you, ladies, because you have believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to you. So how does Mary respond? You can open your eyes again. How does Mary respond to this greeting from Elizabeth? I mean, can you imagine? She's going to her. She's excited. You remember this confirmation of the word God told her that your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. So, I mean, she, the word the word said that she hurried there, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to see this, right? And as she gets there, Elizabeth greets her this way. I mean, can you imagine the encounter of the Holy Spirit that happened between those two and that Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Spirit and the baby leaping in her wound and her saying, how is it that I am blessed that the mother of my Lord? You know, there are just some things that only the Lord can reveal to us. And this is one thing that's happening in this encounter between Mary and Elizabeth. I mean, okay, let's just be real. These are women. I mean, can you just picture like their voices and getting excited when you, when you see somebody that has good news and you're excited with them and, and then imagine that like tenfold because the Holy Spirit is in the midst of that. I mean, can you imagine the joy? And then it says she exclaimed, like we can get pretty loud, can't we? I mean, so just look at this encounter. And then how does Mary respond? Mary responds by my soul glorifies, magnifies the Lord. So from this moment, Mary begins to praise God. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Ladies, God is mindful of you. Can I just tell you, he thinks of you often. He thinks of you frequently. Do you know that you are the apple of his eye? You are on his mind constantly. Wow. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes maybe not such a good thing. Because he sees everything. Mary goes on to say, from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. She's speaking future tense for the Lord has done great things for me. It's not he already has done them, but that he is doing great things for me. Ladies, God is doing great things for you. He wants to do even more great things for you. We need to be like Mary and begin to exclaim his praises. 
and she says, holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our descendants forever. Just as he promised our descendants, God's promises continue to live on and go on forever. When everything else fades away, God's word stands forever. When the new fad fades away, God remains. When the media or the society tries to tell us things, when that fades away, God's love and word remains. And then a side note at the end, and Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. <laughs> I love that. Luke just had to get that in there. You know, that detail. Anybody else a detail person in here? He just had to get that detail in there. But what I want to share this afternoon is blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. So how do we respond when we are chosen. I love that it says Mary went in haste. Like she wasn't messing around. The angel spoke to her. She packed a bag and she was gone. And it was about a 50 to mile trip. And back in those days, and if you've been to Israel, you know how rocky and, and um, hilly some areas can be and how dusty it, uh, it is and that type of thing. So this wasn't just a little trip, I'm going to jump in the car and drive. I mean, so this was a hard trip for her, especially if she went by herself or, or got a ride with somebody else. She was still alone. So how do we respond when we're chosen? With fearlessness. Mary went in haste. When God speaks something to you, I want to encourage you to step up and do it right away, unless he tells you to wait. But for the most part, I don't think that's God's issue with us. <laughs> Sometimes he speaks something to us and we're slow to respond because we want to make sure we need about 10 confirmation signs. We got to talk to our sister, our sisters in the faith and pick up the phone and say, so what do you think? This is what I heard. Do you think I heard right? But she responded with haste. And there are things that the Lord has spoken to your heart that you've kind of been a little slow to. We all do. But we should respond in fearlessness. And I chose the word fearlessness instead of faith because we talk about faith a lot, right? But I specifically wanted to use the word fearlessness as a picture for you guys picture, a mental picture. I'm visual. So a mental picture of something is fearless. It's some, it's a picture of somebody that just goes for it. They are all in and they are just going. May we be women of God who are like that, that we are all in and we're like, Lord, whatever you spoke to me, even if it's, you need to pick up the phone and forgive that person. Even if the Lord says, be not easily offended here. Okay, Lord, I'm releasing it right now. Even if he says, you need to go help that person do that, whatever it is. And we're like, but Lord, I don't normally do that. Well, Lord, the Lord knows, right? It's a matter of us hearing and responding, hearing and responding. And I'm not talking major, even if somebody has a calling to get up and preach on a platform, I'm talking about every day hearing the Lord. Every day of the Lord saying, turn here. I want you to go to the grocery store this afternoon because there's somebody that you're gonna run into. 
and they're just gonna need your smile or, they're gonna, or I'm gonna have you pray for somebody. It's in those little moments listening for the Holy Spirit that says, daughter, do this, daughter, do that. And it's being fearless with that. You know, sometimes we are afraid because we're afraid of what other people will think or we're afraid of rejection. And I wanna say to you, and to myself as I speak this, can I do that too? <laughs> Who cares? We have got to get to the place where we are more desperate of pleasing God our Father than anyone else around us. We have to be so in love with Jesus that we wanna say yes and that we're gonna be fearless even if we do get rejected. You know, when I, when I told you when I lost all my friends and I went to a, um, a bridal shower that turned into a bachelorette party, but I went to the bridal shower and then I came home and everybody else went out. And I remember I was laying in bed and I was just weeping. I'm like, Lord, I don't have anybody. Like everybody has left me. I left my church, all my friends left me and I'm laying in bed crying. And all of a sudden I just started laughing because the Holy Spirit said to me, Christy, you still have me and I'm everything that you need. And then I just kind of started laughing because I pictured myself what I must've looked like to the Lord. <laughs> have you seen those pictures where there's a little girl holding her teddy bear and she doesn't want to give it up? And there's Jesus standing beside, uh, in front of her with this enormous teddy bear behind her, behind him. And he's like, give me your little one and I will give you something greater. Ladies, can we be women of God? That we give him our fear, that we give him our insecurity, that we give him our doubts and let him give us the greater? Because he wants to make that exchange with us. He wants to exchange our fears, our insecurities, our doubt, and give us a fearlessness, amen? He gives us a fearlessness when we praise him, when we worship him, when we soak in his presence. Just like worshiping here today, how many of you felt stronger when you were doing that? Amen. So when we're feeling weak, it's not a matter of we will never fear, or the Bible wouldn't say fear not so many times. I mean, God knows we're human, right? And so it's not of, oh my gosh, I'm afraid I must be sinning. No, it's I'm afraid, let me run into his presence. Lord, I've taken my eyes off of you and put them on my circumstances and that's why fear has come. Because we've taken our eyes off of him who is all powerful, all knowing, all loving, all merciful, all gracious and completely good. And we've put it on whatever it is around us. And God says, I wanna make that exchange. You give me your fear and I will give you a boldness and I will give you a courage to run your race. What would have happened if myself or any of the other breakout speakers today said, I'm too afraid to speak? What would have happened? Yeah, you wouldn't have had that group. This conference wouldn't be here today. And I share that because here's, here's something to remember. Your boldness blesses others. Your boldness blesses others. Your willingness to stand out and possibly be rejected gives somebody else courage, speaks life to somebody else, speaks healing to somebody else. You telling your story of brokenness encourages somebody else who has been broken that God can do it for them. See, God's not a respecter of persons. So if God did it for one, he can do it for another. And the more that you are bold and that you step out, even if you're a little afraid, but yet you step out, your boldness and courage is blessing others along the way. And you may not even see all that you are blessing, but God does. And it's our fearlessness stepping out. How do, how do we do this? How do we continue 
to step out in boldness and not be afraid. Ladies, there's only one way I know how, and that's to get in his presence frequently. You know, I had COVID this past May um, and I was laying in bed and I have asthma. So the COVID went to, my, went to my lungs and my cough got pretty bad. And I'm laying there, so I called my doctor. It was on Memorial Day. I called my doctor. They gave me the antiviral medications. I took it, but then they made me very sick. And I'm like, well, that's, I, I can't take these again. I mean, very sick. And I'm laying in bed and I'm like, Lord, I'm gonna have to take my chances with COVID. But Lord, you are with me. And the enemy started speaking in my mind. You know that, don't you? And the enemy started speaking, this COVID's gonna kill you. And I just flat out was like, okay, Lord, if it's gonna kill me, take me. If not, heal me. Like, take your pick, Lord. Either one, I'm, in, I'm with you in glory or I have a testimony. So I don't care each way. And, but I was feeling, I started feeling that, you guys know that, those, that feeling of fear that sometimes can almost be paralyzing where your mind just starts getting stuck in these thoughts. And so I turned on the worship music on my TV and I laid there. I was so sick, I couldn't even move because I, I was afraid if I moved, I would be sick. And so I'm just laying there and I was just worshiping without moving. And then I kind of raised my arm out like this. I'm like, Lord, you see my arm. It's not very high, but I am raising it to you right now. And then before long, I was able to raise my arms and the spirit of God entered my bedroom and peace like a river came. All fear left, and in that moment, I knew that God was gonna heal me and I was gonna be fine. And by the end of that week, by Friday, I was COVID-free, cough-free, and I preached twice on Pentecost Sunday with not one cough. <laughs> Praise to God. But I share that because as a counselor and a minister, fear gripped me. And I'm here to tell you, it grips all of us at some time. But it's in that moment. We don't need to run from fear, but when we experience it, we need to run to God with it. And that's how we are fearless, is when we begin to feel it, because ladies, let's be real, we're feelers, right? We feel everything. And sometimes we allow our feelings to control us instead of us controlling them. And so when you start to feel that, that fear or that depression or that darkness or that overwhelming, I just wanna encourage you to go, Jesus, here I come. Like, I just need to soak in your presence. I need to speak Jesus over myself. We have got to get serious about not allowing these kinds of feelings and emotions to take over us, but for us to quickly battle them, amen? And I know sometimes the battle can be great. I had a lady come in one time to my office and she said, Christy, about a thousand times yesterday, I had to take control of my thoughts. And I said, well, praise God. And she's like, why? And I said, because you did it a thousand times, right? There are some times that it's just a bad day and we need to continue to speak the name of Jesus. We need to continue to take captive the thoughts and pull them down in the stronghold in the name of Jesus, that's how we wreck strongholds is we line it up to the word of God. If a thought doesn't line up with the word of God, then pull it down, amen? So that's how we are fearless. That's how we're like Mary. In haste, we run. The second thing that we do when we're chosen is I needed another F, so with the fire of God the fire of God, the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit, the presence of the third part of the Trinity was completely involved in this scene. See, sometimes we get so afraid of the Holy Spirit. We're afraid because we don't know how he is going to move. We don't know what he is going to do. We don't know what we are going to sometimes do or say. But here's the thing. If we want to be chosen and we want the world to know who Jesus is, we have to go with the fire of God. We have to be women full of the spirit, overflowing with the spirit. Because there are people, the word of God says that only the spirit can change lives. You and I aren't called to change people's lives. We're called to tell them about Jesus and then the Holy Spirit cleans them up. But if we're not full of the Holy Spirit, how are we gonna overflow with him? 
And if we're not overflowing, how are people going to sense the spirit? We need the fire of God. The Holy Spirit is there to empower us, to make us bold and courageous for whatever it is that we are to do. And sometimes that can be just walking across the street, talking to your neighbor, right? If you're having a problem with your neighbor, sometimes you're like, Lord, I I need your words. I need your boldness. I need you to go with me across the street. Or Lord, I need your boldness. I need your... I need your presence with me at church on Sunday because I'm a prayer team member and I want to be so full of you that when I pray with somebody that they overflow with your spirit, right? See, it's not our part. Our response is not just about us. As a matter of fact, our response is all about others. It's all about being the light, the hands and the feet of Jesus to others. And we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Again, how can we do this? One of the things I love to do is to read the book of Acts. Anybody else in here love to read the book of Acts? And and revival stories and just sitting and soaking with the Lord. And when I say sitting and soaking, I'm talking spending time in his presence, not us talking back, but just saying, Lord, Here I am, your servant is listening. We do a lot of talking sometimes with the Lord, or should I say to the Lord? And we don't take time just to sit and say, Lord, what do you want to say to me? What do you want me to hear today? What do I need to know about who you are? And so in that moment, just sitting and soaking or reading Acts and reading revival stories and saying, this is the power of God. This is who God is, not maybe who we've made him out to be or maybe what we're lacking in our lives or in our churches. Because God's the same God today that he was in the book of Acts, amen? So then what's the difference? He hasn't changed. If he is still calling and his Holy Spirit can still do the same thing today that it did back then, then what's the difference? The carriers, right? We need to be full of him. We need to be full of the fire of God. So our response, just like the Holy Spirit was present in there and the Holy Spirit brought revelation knowledge to Elizabeth. I mean, could you imagine if you're at a family function and you have that family member that's kind of difficult and the Lord gives you a word of knowledge for them? And you say, so how's that new job going? How do you know I have a new job? Well, I just, I've been, I was praying for you and I just felt like the Lord said that you have a new job. Well, I do have a new job, but I still don't know how you know that, right? But when, when we're full of the Holy Spirit, listening to the Lord, then it's like, then the Lord can give us the gifts of the Spirit to bless and unify the body, right? And so if we're, if we're around other people and the God just, you know, maybe he gives us a gift of faith. Maybe he gives us a gift of mercy. Maybe there's somebody who just needs to be loved. And maybe God has given you that gift of mercy. And so you sit and you love on somebody who feels unlovable. And the Holy Spirit just flows from you, through you to that person. And their life is altered because they felt loved for the first time. And you tell them about the love of Jesus. I mean, can you imagine how radical our communities would look like? How radical our churches if we became a place like a hospital, a place of healing, a place of where people could come to be whole, imagine, can we imagine that together? Instead of churches that sometimes, um, how far should I go there? <laughs> Instead of sometimes a, a church that is full of gossip or pride, or critical spirits, or judgments. 
But if we are full of the Holy Spirit, can I just tell you how hard it is for somebody to be around you if you're full of the Holy Spirit and they're not? It's very hard. And so I'm telling you, you will overflow. And that's what God wants for us. And that's what Mary did. When Mary walked into Zechariah's and Elizabeth's house, she was overflowing with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth was filled in the Holy Spirit and John the Baptist flipped in her belly, right? And then the Lord gave her a word of knowledge. The last thing I wanna talk about is how do we respond when we are chosen? With focus. We respond in fearlessness, with the fire of God, and with focus. Mary praised the Lord. She was focused on who he was and is. She didn't doubt what God had spoke to her, but she believed and she was focused on what God had spoke to her. She was knew that it was going to come to pass. She remained focused on the bigger picture of what was going to happen and not on the little day-to-day things. You know, if, if you are easily distracted, all the enemy has to do is just give you a phone call or an email and you're pulled off. Now, I'm not saying things like that don't happen and there's a time for doing work, but we can still be focused on Jesus and who he is even while we're working, right? Because we can manifest the fruit of the spirit throughout the day, right? Peace, love, joy, self-control, you know, all those kinds of things. (laughs) But when we're focused on who God is, then it decreases our discontentment, it decreases our discouragement, and it decreases our depression. See, Mary was so focused and recognized that her dependence was on the Lord alone. Because when she says, he has seen me, he's been mindful of his humble servant. She was focused on who God was and who she is in him and not just about herself. Ladies, let us not get sidetracked on other things that distract us from the main thing. See, the Lord will, not the Lord, the enemy will throw things at you so that you don't do the thing that the Lord wants you to do. I just don't have time. I don't have time to volunteer at the church. I don't have time to build something a ministry or something at the church. I just don't have time. I'm doing this, 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 and this. And sometimes we have to get our whiteboard, erase everything off of it and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to put on there? We are a society that is so sidetracked, but what would happen if us women got focused on Jesus and we got laser focused on who he is and that it's not about us, and there's nothing we can do to make something happen, but the results and everything is up to him. We just said, okay, Lord, here I am. I'm gonna stay focused on you. I am not going to get distracted. I am not going to get discouraged by comparing my life with somebody else's because, God, I know who you are, and you're gonna be be Jesus in my life, and my life is gonna be what you have created me for, not what Susie is doing over here. We remain focused on what God has called us to do. But see, it's up to you now. You've been here all day. You know, you've heard that you are chosen. You've been to breakouts. You've heard how to respond. Now it is up to you. How will you respond in here and how will you respond when you leave those doors? Your family needs you. Your church needs you. Your community needs you. The Lord needs you to walk out your purpose with fearlessness, fire, and focus. Stand with me if you will, if we'll have the worship team come back. So if you are afraid, ask the Lord to meet you in that place of fear. If you want more of the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord to give you more of him. If you need to refocus, ask the Lord to help you become not become distracted. See, here's the thing, it's up to you. 
It's all up to you now. God is so good and he is so faithful. And I love the word that says, when you call out to God, he will meet you there. So what I want you to do, I just want you to close your eyes. We're just gonna, as, as they quietly play, I'm gonna pray and then I wanna take a minute or two just for you and the Lord. So Father, right now I pray that you would speak to hearts all around the sanctuary, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, if somebody is experiencing fear right now, Lord, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Father, if somebody needs more of the Holy Spirit, Father, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, if, if somebody needs to get refocused, they've been unfocused, distracted, Lord, help, help center them back in you and your promises for them. somebody crying out right now to the Lord and I want you to know sister that he is hearing you and he sees you and help is on the way Singing. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. When you begin Jesus to feel it and mean it, and you're like, Jesus, I'm all in. Just begin to worship and sing. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, for every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Jesus. I speak Jesus over each one of you in here.
So Father, I pray over each woman in here today, Lord. Father, I thank you for each one of them. Father, I thank you that you have chosen each one of them. And Lord, from their mother's womb, you have chosen them. You have ordained them for such a time as this. And Father, I pray that as they exit, Lord, that they will be fearless, that they will be on fire for you and that they will be focused, God. Lord, as they go forth, Lord, bless them. Bless them from the north, bless them from the south, bless them from the east and bless them from the west. And Father, I pray that you would continue to breathe new life on each one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May his face shine upon you, ladies, and be gracious to you. Well, thank you for coming to our first annual Women's Conference Chosen. Don't forget, ladies. You are God, you're the apple of God's eye and you are chosen. And don't let anyone ever make you question it or doubt it in the name of Jesus, amen. God's blessings to you.